Well, welcome. We're glad that you're here with us at chapel today. And we trust that this will be a time of renewal and refreshment and good reflection and remembrance of hymns that we all grew up singing. So I think this will be a little bit different because we are going to sing African American spirituals today. And a lot of us learn those not so much in church, but just in the community out there. So we're very glad uh, that you'll have the opportunity to sing with us these special songs. Let's begin by praying together the Lord's Prayer. Will you join me in prayer? Let us pray. Our Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy thy name. Thy Thy kingdom kingdom come, come, thy thy will be done, done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Well, let's sing the first verse of Amazing Grace. Wow. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. You know, I bet uh, that many of the African American slaves in our country. And probably in in Britain, since Amazing Grace was written by John Newton, who was British, uh, I bet they also sang Amazing Grace. Uh, And I'm sure that if they knew the story of John Newton, it would have been very special to them. But who knows whether they had the opportunity to know that, that story. So we are grateful for what God did in the life of John Newton and that he was able to write this hymn that we all love so much. So let's sing the first verse together again, and then we'll sing that great last verse, When We've Been There 10,000 Years. Okay? Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved the I mentioned we're going to sing uh, some African-American spirituals today and I thought I would just uh, tell you just one brief thing about American uh, African-American spirituals these are often called songs of the Underground Railroad and they were spiritual and work songs used during the early to mid 19th century in the United States to encourage and convey coded information to escaping slaves as they moved along the various underground railroad routes. Now, some people disagree with that, I will just tell you that, but most people think that at least some of the African American spirituals, surely not all of them, were used in the uh, underground railroad. And some would have been used in one portion, one leg of the underground railroad. So just a lot of different ways that these were used. As it was illegal in most states to teach slaves to read or write, songs were used to communicate messages and directions about when, where, and how to escape and warned of dangers and obstacles along the route. So as we sing these uh, spirituals today, see if you hear anything that might have been a direction about when, where, and how. Uh, or how, where, whatever that was I said. So, <laughs> so uh, we'll, we'll think about those as we sing. So our first one is, 
I'm going to sing when the Spirit says sing. And we'll sing the first verse and then stop, and then we'll talk just a little bit, and then we'll sing again. Okay, I'm going to sing. I'm going to sing when the Spirit says sing. I'm going to sing when the Spirit says sing. I'm going to sing when the Spirit says sing. And obey the Spirit of the Lord. Oh, that's a great one, isn't it? In Romans 8, 26, the Apostle Paul wrote, Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. Isn't that a comfort? Yeah. Sometimes we know we need to pray, and we, we just don't know what to say, and we just sigh. And we know that the Spirit is wording our prayers for us. And so that's a great, great promise. So this, the next verse of this, which we're going to sing, is I'm going to pray when the Spirit says pray. Okay, so every time it says sing, we're going to say pray on this time through. Okay? I'm going to pray when the Spirit says pray. I'm going to pray when the Spirit says pray. I'm going to pray when the Spirit says <laughs> well, we could do the last verse. You know, there's one more verse. Well, there's actually two, but the last one is, I'm going to shout. So you have to say shout really loud, okay? I'm going to shout when the Spirit says shout. I'm going to shout when the Spirit says shout. I'm going to shout when the Spirit says shout. And obey the Spirit of the Lord. Our next song is standing in the need of prayer um, and it starts with the verse that says not my brother not my sister but it's me O lord standing in the need of prayer we all are in need of prayer need for us to pray and need for others to pray for us so let's sing that and then we'll talk about it just a little bit not my brother nor my sister but it's me O lord Standing in the need of prayer, not my brother, not my sister, but it's me, O oh Lord. Standing in the need of prayer, it's me, it's me, O oh Lord. Standing in the need of prayer, it's me, it's me, O oh Lord. Standing in the need of prayer. You know, I kept thinking there was something else to that song but I didn't turn the page. <laughs> I kept thinking there's got to be something I, I else. I, I don't think it ends there. Lower. I think we need to sing it in the regular key. <laughs> okay, whatever we need to do, that's fine with me, Bill. You know more about that than I do. So let me read for you uh, from 2 Corinthians uh, 1, verses 10 and 11. He who rescued us from so deadly a peril will continue to rescue us on him we have set our hope that he will rescue us again, as you also join in helping us by your prayers, so that many will give thanks on our behalf for the blessing granted us through the prayers of many. The Apostle Paul wrote that. And then in Hebrews we read these words, Let us therefore approach the throne of grace with boldness so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. So let's sing again, standing in the need of prayer, verse one. Not my brother, not my sister, but it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Not my brother, not my sister, but it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. we're always in the need of prayer so that's a very good reminder our next hymn is one that I'm sure that you sang either in church or if you were 
in scouts. These were often sung. These were in the scout songbook, as I understand it. Uh, if you went to church camp, these were songs that, this was a song that you might have sung around the uh, fire in the evening. So this is, We Are Climbing Jacob's Ladder. Let's sing that first verse together. In addition to remember remembering singing it around the campfires at scouts or church camp or somewhere, I hope that it also reminded you of the story that is found in the Old Testament. So let me read to you the story that this song is based on. This is from the 28th chapter of Genesis. Jacob left Beersheba and went toward Haran. He came to a certain place and stayed there for the night because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones of the place, he put it under his head and lay down in that place. Have you, has your pillow ever been so hard you thought you had a stone for a pillow? Sometimes when you travel, that happens in hotels, doesn't it? So he lay down in that place and he dreamed that there was a ladder. Some translations say staircase, but our song says ladder. There was a ladder set up on the earth and it's the top of it reached to heaven. And the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And the Lord stood beside him and said, I am the Lord, the God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac, the land on which you lie, I will give to you and your offspring. And your offspring shall be like the dust of the earth, and you shall spread abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south. And all the families of the earth shall be blessed in you and your offspring. That probably sounds familiar because that was God's promise to Abraham. And of course, Jacob is a descendant of Abraham. Know that I am with you and will keep you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land for I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised. Then Jacob woke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. You ever had an experience where you realized all of a sudden that God was there? And we didn't know it. We weren't aware. We weren't paying enough attention. And all of a sudden, God breaks through to us. And we can say with Jacob, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. And he was afraid and said, How awesome is this place. This is none other than Bethel, the house of God. And this is the gate of heaven. Isn't that great? Let's sing that first verse one more time. We are climbing Jacob's ladder. We are climbing Jacob's ladder. We are climbing Jacob's ladder. Soldiers of the cross. It goes on to say that every rung is climbs higher, higher. Every round, every rung goes higher, higher. Soldiers of the cross. So we're going up, aren't we? We are climbing higher and higher. Well, this one is low, swing low, sweet chariot. So we've been high and we've been low. You can't, you know, you can't figure that out in advance. It just happens. Just <laughs> And uh, we just thank God that sometimes he takes control of my tongue. Yeah. So <laughs> that's a good thing. Okay, let's sing Swing Low, Sweet Chariot. We start with the chorus, Swing Low, Sweet Chariot, and then we sing the first verse. I looked over Jordan, and what did I see? Okay. Mm -hmm. 
says, if you get there before I do, come in for to carry me home. Tell all my friends I'm coming to. Come in for to carry me home. And then the third verse says, and see if you can identify with this, sometimes I'm up and sometimes I'm down, but still my soul feels heavenly bound. These verses are just great, aren't they? And it helps to read them all at one time because you really get the impact of what the author was writing. Our next uh, hymn is a very um, familiar hymn, I think. There is a bomb in Gilead. I'm going to pronounce it wrong if I don't watch out. Um, There is a bomb in Gilead. And this one is another one where you sing the chorus first. And then you sing the verse, and this verse is, Sometimes I feel discouraged, okay? So there is a bomb in Gilead. There is a bomb in Gilead To make a wounded hole There is a bomb in Gilead To heal the sin-sick Prophet Jeremiah would be on that list. Listen to these words from Jeremiah chapter 8. My joy is gone. My grief is upon me. My heart is sick. Hark the cry of my poor people from far and wide in the land. Is the Lord not in Zion? Where are you, Lord? Are you not here anymore? Is her king not in her? And then God responds, what have they, Why have they provoked me to anger with their images and with their foreign idols? The harvest is past, the summer is ended, and we are not saved. For the hurt of my people, God says, I, no, Jeremiah says, For the hurt of my poor people, I am hurt. I mourn and dismay has taken hold of me. Is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why then has the health of my poor people not been restored? Wow. He really was discouraged, wasn't he? And and we felt like that, haven't we? If we're honest, there have been times when we have felt like that. So is there a balm in Gilead? Yes, there is a balm in Gilead, and it is Jesus, our friend and Savior. Let's sing that one more time. There is a balm. Thank you. 
goes on to remind us that if you cannot preach like Peter, remember he preached on the day of Pentecost and over 3,000 people came to know Christ. If you cannot preach like Peter and you cannot pray like Paul, you can tell the love of Jesus and say, he died for all. Isn't that wonderful? Ah, yeah. We can all tell somebody about Jesus. All right, what's next? Um, steal away, is yes. that right? Mm -hmm. Okay, steal away to Jesus. Um, well, this is another one where in the African American spirituals, this is common, you start with the chorus. So we're gonna sing the chorus first and then um, the verse which says, I hear God calling, God calls me by the thunder. Okay, so let's start with steal away. Steal away, steal away. people that it was time to leave to go toward the underground railway yes so uh, in fact at the bottom of your uh, uh, hymn those of you who are here in the chapel you have a little footnote that says this is an, is an example of the spiritual with coded meaning that Frederick Douglass spoke of in his narrative of 1855 my bondage and my freedom so just another little bit about the steal away to Jesus. Our next hymn is Nobody Knows the Troubles. I, oh, wait, I forgot to read the scripture for you. We can't get away from that. <laughs> Matthew 6, 1 through 8. Did we sing that twice? No. No? We only sang it once? Once. Oh, good. Well, this is when I'm supposed to read the scripture there. <laughs> okay, so good. <laughs> Matthew chapter 6, we read these words. Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them. For then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets so that they may be praised by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And when you are praying, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do. For they think that they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them. For your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. So we are to go into our room. We are to steal away and be with Jesus in the quiet. That's what those words said to me anyway. So let's sing that one more time. Steal away to Jesus. Steal away, steal away, steal away to Jesus. Thunder, the trumpet sounds within 
stay here so if you heard me say ain't you you know why <laughs> that's right it just ain't came got, back to me i ain't, I ain't got, got long, long to stay here it. was the way i learned it so <laughs> that's right our next hymn is nobody knows the troubles i've seen don't you feel like saying that sometimes <laughs> a lot of the time frankly nobody knows what i am going through it's just you know yeah so that's our, our hymn to sing right now, Nobody Knows the Trouble I've Seen. And here's another one that we start with the chorus. Okay. Nobody knows the trouble I've seen. Nobody knows but Jesus. Nobody knows the trouble I've seen. Glory, hallelujah. Sometimes I'm up, sometimes I'm down, oh yes Lord, sometimes I'm almost to the ground, oh yes Lord. Knows the trouble I've seen, nobody knows but you. So they all just learned why I do not sing a cappella, okay? So I sing with the piano, because otherwise you don't want to hear it. So, Okay, well that's a good one. Um, I've got peace like a river. Woo, that's a good one, isn't it? I've got, I still forgot to read the scripture. Oh, no. It's because we only we, sang it once. Okay. That's no, we did I thought we sang that twice. No, nobody knows. <laughs> Seriously? Okay. Nobody Maybe knows. Did. Maybe we did. <laughs> but the scripture. I thought we hurt. sang it twice, but we didn't read the scripture, so I'm going to read the scripture now. Yeah. <laughs> nobody knows the trouble I've seen. First Peter chapter 5. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that he may exalt you in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. Discipline yourselves. Keep alert. Like a roaring lion, your adversary, the devil, prowls around, looking for someone to devour. Resist him, steadfast in your faith, for you know that your brothers and sisters in all the world are undergoing the same kinds of suffering as you. And after you have suffered for a while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, support, strengthen, and establish you. To him be the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. All right, I do think we sang that twice. Did, uh, I thought we, didn't we sing that twice? Yeah. Well, <laughs> okay. Well, we're going to sing I, I've Got Peace Like a River now. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Okay, I've Got Peace Like a River. <laughs> Here we go. This one doesn't start with the chorus. It's just a one verse thing. That's all there is. So, right. Okay. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace. go 
the way to the bottom and then start again at the top. It's just like you sing it twice. But they've got to mess this up by putting it fancy in the, in the uh, information, the music that you have. So I've got peace like a river. In ch uh, Philippians chapter 4, we read these words from the Apostle Paul. And these first ones will not surprise you. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. We need people, all of us, but lots of people, to be more gentle. People are shouting at people they disagree with and, you know, just being awful to one another because they disagree about something. We are all one in Christ, and we need to be gentle. So let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Uh, and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me. Wow, what you've seen in me. Can we say that? And the God of peace will be with you. So let's sing again. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like the river. I've got peace like the river. I've got peace like the river. The next two verses are so simple that we can sing those even if you don't have the words in front of you because the second verse says, I've got love like a river. I've got okay. love like a river in my soul. Let's sing that together. I've, I've got, got love like the river. I've got love like the river. says I've got joy like a river and wherever you are wherever you are make your face let your face know that you have joy okay because a lot of times we sing I've got joy like a river <laughs> <laughs> well let's you know let's tell your face okay <laughs> tell your face and let's sing I've got joy like a river I've, I've got, got joy like a river that when we sing, our face ought to know that we're singing. <laughs> and so, uh, and the next time you're in church, tell your face, we're in church. Let's sing like we've got joy, okay? Yeah, don't sing with, you know, you're looking down at your hymnal and don't look at anybody else. At least hold your hymn book up so you can look around. <laughs> All right, okay. Um, our last song is a very beautiful song, Give Me Jesus. And uh, our former pastor's wife sang this two or three times. She had a beautiful voice. And she sang a beautiful arrangement of this two or three times. I think probably during Lent, but maybe not necessarily then. Uh, and it's just a beautiful song. So listen to the words as you sing. Now this one starts with the verse and then goes to the chorus. So this will be a little easier to follow, okay? In the morning when I rise, Give me Jesus. In the morning. 
Give me Jesus in the morning when I rise. In the first chapter of Philippians, we read these words. It is my eager expectation and hope that I will not be put to shame in any way, that, but, but by my speaking with all boldness, Christ will be exalted now as always in my body, whether by life or by death. For to me, living is Christ, and dying is gain. If I am to live in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me, and I do not know which I prefer. I am hard-pressed between the two. My desire is to depart and be with Christ, for that is far better. But to remain in the flesh is more necessary for you. Since I am convinced of this, I know that I will remain and continue with all of you for your progress and joy in faith, so that I may share abundantly in your boasting in Christ Jesus when I come to you again. Wow, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain, but to remain in the flesh is more necessary so I will remain and continue so that I may share abundantly in your boasting in Christ. Give me Jesus when I die, when I rise, when I rise in the morning, but when I rise in the last morning at the trumpet sound, give me Jesus. So let's sing that verse one more time. Give me Jesus. In the morning when I rise, in the morning when I rise, in the morning when I rise, give me Jesus, give me Jesus, give me Jesus, you can have all this Dark midnight was my cry. Oh, when I come to die, when I come to die, give me Jesus. That should be our prayer. Well, that was our last song for the day, except for our closing song. So it is time for us to read or recite together the 23rd Psalm. And so will you join me now? It's in your binder if you are uh, with us here in the chapel. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou, thou preparest a table, table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou, thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Uh, I wanted to read one of these verses again and now I can't I don't see it uh, yes after you have suffered with Christ for a little while the God of all grace who has called you to his 
eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, support, strengthen, and establish you. To him be the power forever and ever. Let us pray. As we pass through the valley of suffering, may the Lord who accompanies us make our steps firm and our trust secure so that God's saving power may be more fully known throughout the world. Amen. Let us sing together, God be with you till we meet again. God be with you till we meet again. By his counsels guide the war.